Over the last five years, the Catchment Action Program has supported probably over 130 projects. Projects that support healthy soils, river restoration, wildlife corridors and bush regeneration projects. Ultimately, the aim is to connect habitat corridors and waterways from the escarpment to the sea. But the Catchment Action Program is really critical in kind of building that capacity in the landholder. So these are our first berries. <laughs> Ultimately, we'd like to be able to have the landholder be the steward of this beautiful landscape. And I think that's the best part of the program for me is watching landholders grow with their projects. So I get to hear their vision from the start and then I get to watch it manifest. We've planted over 30 species of rainforests now. I see the landholders just learn all about you know, what they're actually doing and how they're intimately engaging with the land and that's the most valuable thing I think that the program provides. We're on the escarpment at Tapitali. This is our property where we've done a bit of regeneration. This is a five-year project. It'll take that long for the trees to get big enough so if we start to get a canopy. This was covered in lantana. You could, couldn't even walk through here when we started. And now we're having this amazing experience of watching everything grow up. The red cedar was the main tree and they were logged here. And some of the land was farmed. When that was abandoned, the lantana just came in and took over. So our idea is plant lots of trees, create a canopy, because lantana doesn't grow as too well under a canopy. There's a section of our property a bit higher up where we have the turpentine forest, and under the turpentine forest, there's very little lantana growing there. It's because they're established trees and we've already got a nice canopy there. I wanted to show you this one that's one of my favorite, the Morton Bay fig. And it was probably about that tall when we planted it. So it's done this in two years, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> we couldn't have done this without the uh, local land services grants that we got because it's quite an expensive adventure here. At first we had contractors come in with an excavator, made some tracks down through to the bottom of our property. We did some spraying, we did a lot of hand clearing and the, and the cages and the star pickets are a huge expense and we've planted on our property probably 500 trees now and we couldn't have done all of that without some help. When we first applied for this grant, one of our objectives was to create a corridor along the escarpment knowing that neighboring properties had already done a lot of work. I'm a mad bird watcher and we've already recorded over 80 species of birds on our property. And we've planted different species so that all year round you'll have something in flowers so there's always something there for the wildlife and the birds and that's my dream to provide a habitat, a place for the animals to live safely and have food. So we have here a small segment of the Illawarra lowlands grassy woodland. So the species of trees and shrubs we've grown are consistent with that. The intention is to revegetate the gullies, plant a broad range of trees and shrubs and grasses that fit with the local environmental communities. So this is a local Melaleuca and you can see he's doing quite well. He's starting to grow on the top there. He's got his feet in the ground there and he's quite happy. We felt that if we put some work and time into it, we could improve the wooded areas by removing lantana and privet and revegetating those areas, improve the biodiversity of the farm. And we could see that we can make a contribution to improvement of the land over a period of time. We've had two grants here on the farm. The main area of initial work was to clean out the dams and fence off the dams so that cattle aren't going in and out of the dams. Um, that improves the quality of the water, both on farm but off farm as it makes its way down the gullies. Taking the time to do that 
uh, was essential before we introduced cattle into the property. Previously, the land hadn't been rested to any great extent, so I felt the first thing we could do was to take the cattle off and give it a rest. It does encourage native species, it grasses to reappear. It tells you that the seed bank is quite resilient, that there's quite a lot of seed there that, given the opportunity to grow, will grow. And now we have some Solanum salatum, which is a beautiful Australian shrub, which is only found in the area from Wollongong to Nowra and out to Bungania and uh, it's a threatened species. So it was quite exciting for us to be able to do that and be supported by the local land service grants has enabled that to happen more quickly and more effectively. Drive Midwatch's key role is to look after the health and productivity of the Shoalhaven River and we also care for the tributaries of the river, which Tapatala Creek is one of. We don't mind at Riverwatch which land we're working on, whether it be publicly owned or privately owned. I just think it's really important that we all work together as a community, government, landholders and volunteers like ourselves. So we've been successful in getting a number of grants over many years. We do work on the river itself, planting of mangroves, planting of casuarinas, fencing off the river, mainly from dairy cattle and things like that. I think it's really important to work on areas that adjoin rivers or creeks or wetlands because those areas are biodiversity hotspots. Once you get trees in there, you end up with insects coming, birds coming, and all of a sudden they're just this river of life. By using the rivers to join up areas of bushland, you then create that connectivity and it's like a habitat corridor. The other thing it does is improves water quality downstream in particular because you're not having all that sediment go into the river and into the water. It also improves productivity in land adjacent to these habitat corridors. It slows down the wind, you know, slows down the drying out and also creates like an arbour for beneficial insects and birds to live in and control pests and diseases on the paddocks adjoining. What we were really amazed at is once we started work on Tapatali Creek, stabilising the banks and planting trees, just how quickly those trees grow. Particularly in the coastal areas, the growth rate is astounding. The long-term trajectory of rain is down. Likewise, the annual temperatures have a trajectory up. And I often walk out into the past year and I think, what should I be doing now? How can I mitigate against climate change? How can I best prepare my property to be resilient? The value has been in landholders really seeing that integrating natural resource management with agriculture and productivity go hand in hand and you can't have one without the other. If you're the keeper of a piece of land, if you're a land manager, instead of looking at the land and saying, what can I take? Rather look at the land and go, what can I do to support this land so that I prosper and the land prospers for future generations?